Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Before this thing is ready for a ride, we have a few things left to fix. We already got the motor running, A+, plus, right? We need a drive chain. I'd really like to get it running on its OEM ignition, so we gotta troubleshoot the ignition system. And I'd like to use the OEM gas tank or determine that it's no good and move forward from it. So this video, we're gonna fix the ignition system. I really want to get it running on that. So where do we start? First of all, you know, unlock, get the plastic off, get the gas tank off, and you can see everything you need to see. So you could see that there's been some redneck creativity to the wire harness here. Um, so I got to spend a few minutes fixing that. In addition, I am plugged the pulse generator to make sure it goes. So I would start out always with trying to get things hooked up again the best you can, right? Because normally by doing that <laughs> you can see kind of what works and what doesn't work. So here we go. All the wires are hooked up. Um, particularly this ground wire. I'm not sure why it was disconnected. That might be the only thing wrong with it, right? They also spent a lot of time. I, with this particular year all-terrain vehicle, I have a tendency to do this also. Put a ground such that you know the spark coil is grounded, you know the frame is grounded, you know the entire circuit, hopefully the motor is grounded. Sometimes I have to run an extra wire from here to the motor to make sure it's grounded. It doesn't always pick up ground through, especially when they're loose like this, through the uh, mounting bolts. But anyway, so now that all the wires are hooked up, where to next? You're gonna wanna unplug the CDI. Um, even if you have all these wire ties in the way, right? You wanna be careful because remember this rig is 40 plus years old and what we're going to do is with a meter we're going to check out what's going on in here if the CDI is happy if all the wires are as they should be you'll get a spark and if they're not you will not get a spark right so we'll go through that I'm going to use the cheapest meter <laughs> available uh, they used to give these away for free. That's how valuable they are, right? Um, I think these still sell for $5.99 on sale, $4.99 on sale, something like that. This has been sitting around for so long, I brought some extra batteries out. They're probably gone, right? They probably passed on, but who knows? But we're going to use this lousy meter to troubleshoot this all-terrain vehicle. If you're going to own an all-terrain vehicle, try to come up with the $10 to own a meter. So, we're unplugged. Easy, right? And you see that green wire, and you see how that probe is jammed in there? That's kind of important, because that means one of the probes is hooked to what this thing sees as ground. Now, what is ground in the real world? Ground in the real world should be your engine and your frame. So, turn on the meter and you check to see, is my engine grounded? And we get down to like two ohms, considering the wires and the resistance <laughs> between the motor and the frame and all that, that's about as good as you're gonna get. And is my frame grounded and you could see as I scratch it on there right we're down to three ohms there through the paint so my frame is grounded that's all <laughs> all kind of important right so that means your CDI is seeing ground now what's it seeing for the rest of the wires I have a tendency to draw a quick picture and that's as I'm looking into this just like that right so when you draw this picture you'll see what you're gonna have and you just work your way around obviously I'm plugged into ground right there then I'm just gonna work my way around if the bike is turned off 
you have a black wire, white stripe, you get approximately zero ohms, black wire, white stripe. So if I kind of plug this in here, right, and you take a look, you could see that the bike is turned off. I'm getting, you know, about six ohms. And once again, see right there, I'm turned off. I turn the bike on and I plug in here. Right, and I get infinity ohms. And I wrote that down on the piece of cardboard. Then you just work your way around, right? For the red, red with the black stripe, you could see I'm getting about 250 ohms. And the more I kind of push and work my way through the corrosion, I'll bring that down a little bit. If you take a look at the chart, you see you should get between two and 300 ohms. Next one around is the input to the, um, the uh, spark coil. And you can see if I kind of work at it, I get myself down almost to a short, and you can see it should be less than one ohm. Um, this is a blank, right? That guy right there, right? You can see it's a blank. And then the last one in the corner is blue and yellow. You can kind of see a blue and yellow right there. And you should get between, you know, 20 and 40 ohms, 20 and 30 ohms, depending on how well you hook up here and what range you're on. Let's see, 33, 32. So I have written on there somewhere around 30 ohms. Sorry for the little bit shaky camera work. Let me just scan this down so you guys could see. So, um, obviously I did find a couple of things wrong. First of all, this was unplugged. And secondly, if you look at the wires here, the ground wire which should be grounded, but it's got a nasty abrasion and you can see it's a little bit frayed. So, shouldn't be a problem once again because it's ground, but if it was one of the other wires, it could kill your spark. Um, so just, just mentioning that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this back in. We're gonna see if the spark returned and um, see if we can't get this puppy to start and run on its own ignition system. Once again, that's the goal of this. So let's see if we got it there. So let me show you that it's actually sparking. Hopefully it didn't shake and wobble too much and you guys could see that. All right, I put some gas in it and spilled it all over. Unfortunately, this is, you know, kind of a cold start because the goal is to not have portable CDIs or anything hanging all over it. So let's see how she does. So I'm just going to put a little bit of gas in the tank and swish it around. Though the tank doesn't look healthiest in the world, I can't really find a spot that it rusted through through. But trust me, the gas will find it. You know, I sloshed it around. I really, I really don't see it leaking anywhere. Um, 
<laughs> except the turn off valve this leaks by um, it was bubbling and you could see it's a little wet so the gas tank appears to be intact mm. <laughs> just from the appearance I do not think I will fill it with gas and uh, come back a couple of days later or a week later or a month later God knows when I'll get back to it because you know just from weather changes it'll pressurize and depressurize and if there's any spot ready to go especially on the bottom it'll let go and it'll all spill out and who needs a gas bill so I guess I could get it running on that tank as it is <laughs> he says nervously so I dug around the hoard and I I did find a chain but the sprocket is just so bloody worn here you know you put the chain on it and it just it looks like not only is it gonna slip it could throw it right and the last thing I want to do is you know destroy this nice running engine so yeah I mean you could see it just just doesn't settle on there like it should and on the sprocket here it actually bags up in the front which could have a tendency to punch through the case so I ordered um, sprockets and a chain for this thing so I have 300 and call it another I don't know I think it was 75 bucks give or take a little bit so I'm gonna have 375 in here but I'll have a nice set a nice chain and sprockets which will be good the back tires more or less hold there though I think you guys could see the bubble gum down here it's got a pretty good chew out on it the front tire though it's brandy new and as a matter of fact still still has some fur really doesn't hold air though these split rims have never been great about holding air um, but we're close we're really close to getting a ride and we'll do that for the next video when you're working on these things you just kind of got to chip away a little at a time right to get them uh, running um, before you put any big money into it right before you throw 75 bucks at it for a chain and sprockets you really want to make sure that the engine's going to start and run oh I also have a carburetor on it you know what by the time I'm done with this thing I'll probably put some slime in the tires I'll probably have about $400 for a running and riding all-terrain vehicle um, it was pretty enjoyable to work on too right probably out of all of these I really do know the 200s the 185 200s or 200 cc Honda motor the best so anyway I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe you know let's save these things one at a time take care now folks bye